Hello everyone. Welcome to the book review, Letting Go the Pathway to Surrender. We are in chapter 13, Peace. In the map of consciousness, this is the last topic. After this, we are going to talk about relationships, how to Im implement all the things that we have learned, uh, workplace and how physical health and all those things. Those are like really good topics, um, which will show us how we can implement what we learned in this book. So today we are going to talk about peace. If you all remember the map of consciousness, it is at the top, um, top of uh, all the things. And then, so today the, the three topics under peace are profound impact of peace, silent transmission, and surrender to ultimate reality. So peace, right? What is peace? Once you come to that level, we have talked about courage, the breaking point, neutrality, accepting, acceptance, love, and then peace, right? When you come to this place, we have accepted everything and everyone. We have no, we don't go into the lower tendencies at all. So when there is nothing pulling you, you are just raising, raising, raising up, right? So it is immense peace. It is like, if you see the chakras, all the chakras are balanced. You know, that when all the chakras are balanced and are in harmony, the energy is rising up and there is a very quiet presence about you. You are perception on everything changes. There is so much inner shift that you are the same person. You will be the same person. People around you might not see much difference in you, but you are going to feel the difference. The way in which you are going to see the world is different. There is a shift in the perception of the universe, right? You don't have any more conflicts. Like there is total absence of negativity. And when there is total absence of negativity and judgment, what happens is whatever another person is doing, it doesn't bother you anymore. You will see it from the place of love on, oh, what if, right? What if this could have happened? I actually had, my father-in-law was here and um, he's 85 years old and he has certain issues. And um, one day, like, you know, my younger son's birthday was there. I invited all his friends over. And that day was my mother-in-law's um monthly because she passed away recently we do masikam monthly prayer for her and that was there so too many things were going on i was cooking food for 10 kids split. so a lot of things were going on and he came and he was not eating his breakfast he was taking his own time and it was already one o'clock and he has to eat because i didn't cook lunch yet so he had to eat breakfast and his usual breakfast time is 11 30 he was not eating it he was not coming then i was i got really mad i'm like come on, you have to eat and go and then I have to give the kids food. So I was like, why are you taking so much time, right? And then I was like, okay, everything went off. And then my older son, I was telling him that I got really upset with grandpa because he was not getting it. There are people in the house, all these things are happening and he was taking his own sweet time and he was not just getting it. Then my older son right away said, because he went out and came, I think... Uh, something happened. Um, maybe he was tired. Maybe he was taking his time to settle down. Why didn't you think from that way? You taught me to think from this way. Why didn't you think in that way? So that immediately, like, you know, we all know that I taught my kids to do that. Like, what if? Always think what if, right? Always think what if, what if their cell phone charge went away? What if they missed the bus? Always think that way, then you will not think negative about the person. That said, when we are put in a very, very, in certain circumstances, okay, very we end up thinking that. Very good. Um, okay, let me mute you. So, that is what it is, right? When you come to peace, you don't have that negative feelings anymore. You do not fall into that. Of course, you quickly come back. You are in the journey of like wherever you are. If you are a little bit in courage and higher and acceptance, you will go to negative tendencies, but you come back. In peace, there is no question about it. You won't get negative feelings at all. Why? Because we have transcended beyond the feelings, beliefs, identities, and concerns. We have transcended. I mean, it's 
it's a done deal. We don't, they don't bother us anymore. We are better than that kind of thing, you know. And this is the this is the state which all the seekers, you are saying, I'm I'm doing spirituality, I'm doing bhakti yoga, I'm doing raja yoga, I'm doing this, that religion, my religion, this one, that one, Krishna consciousness, everything, the seekers are trying to come to this place. The ultimate is this place, the ultimate of human existence on earth, the ultimate earthly thing. When earth is a school, we are learning the lessons, the ultimate lesson, the PhD of this is peace. Okay. So, and there is oneness, right? Like whatever we do, what happens is because we have come, like, you know, if a person has done a PhD in math, right, then you give any math problem, like simple math, arithmetic or algebra or calculus or differentials or whatever, they will do it like this. It becomes effortless because they have practiced like 10,000 hours of practice in things. Um, my son, he's learning a violin and he learns viola. And when he had to switch to the instrument viola in school, he did not get into violin and orchestra. There's a lot of competition here. So he had to, teacher said, you have to play viola because we need a complete orchestra. So he, at first he was like, oh my God, why am I changing the instrument? And it, both are string instruments, but a little different. The E string is not there and things like that. And it's a, viola is a bigger instrument. You need to, especially when you are playing both, he doesn't want to give up violin. So he plays both in the same class with his music teacher. He shifts from violin to viola, 15 minutes violin and 15 minutes viola. So he just picked it up. It was so effortless. Why? Because of the practice because of the immense practice he did with violin and because he knows everything else the music the notations he can read everything he just picked it up and he started playing and i got him first two books and in summer he just finished the two books before even the teacher came so it's like this you know everything becomes effortless when we are at peace because there is we all have immense 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 energy within us we are not manifesting it we have huge potential among all of us we are not manifesting it once. Why? Because we are spending so much on the lower tendencies, anger, frustration, grief, depression, um, jealousy, envy, pride, ego. We are draining our energies with those things. So we are we don't have enough energy to do anything like everything seems like a chore. Everything seems. Why is it so hard for me to get everything? Why is it? Does it happen only to me? All those things are because your negative tendencies are pulling you down, pulling you down, pulling you down. The moment you elevate higher, you have realized that, oh my God, I have 100 units of energy and there is nothing draining it. And the fun thing is when you do something that you love, when you do something that you're passionate about, it never drains your energy. It recharges you. It gives you your 100 units becomes 200 units because you love what you're doing. You are enjoying what you're doing. And, and the... It's like you have to experience it. You know, we all experience it. It's not that you have to go to a certain state to experience it. You all have done what you love. You all have some hobbies. You all have some passions. When you are doing that, you completely forget time. You completely forget time, space. If your physical body has pain, you forget that pain. You won't, that won't bother you anymore. You can sit for hours and do it. So that is what it is. Anything you do, when you come to peace, you're constantly getting recharged. Your aura is extending. Like you just have to be in a place and everybody around you feels energized. You know, that is what it is. And when you are in that place, anything, a thought, you just have to have a thought and it will manifest because there is nothing contradicting it. There is no self-doubt. There is no, um, you know, logic, you know, touching it. But when you come to peace, you drop the logic because you have seen something which cannot be bound in words. You have seen something which you cannot explain. You cannot put a word to it, description to it. That's what all the Vedantas say, right? When you have what is truth, you cannot explain truth. If Because if you have explained it, you have put words to it, then it's not infinite anymore, right? So something like that. So peace is always, always beautiful. The profound impact of peace. So as I said, we all experience glimpses of it, right? So here, these all the clouds are our negative tendencies. And this sun's rays, sun is always there. Sun is always there. Sun's brightness is always there. Sun's rays are always there. How come we are not feeling it all the time? Because the clouds of negative tendencies is blocking it. And imagine if we have full sun, the potential of full sun, right? 
if you channelize the sun's energy with a magnifying glass on paper, it burns. That's the potential. That's the potential we have. If we focus our energies on a task that we love without anything pulling us backwards, that is the thing. It gets done right away like this. So we all have negative tendencies and they are pulling us down. And But that said, we have seen the glimpses of peace. We have touched the vibration of peace. And whenever we did it, we are like, oh my God, those are the good old days. When I was young, I used to be like this or carefree. Kids always are in peace. Like, you know, they are very innocent. They don't have any of these negative tendencies. That's why they are so joyful. And it is so nice to be in the presence of kids. You forget it. When you see a giggle of a small kid, you are like, you laugh at them. You are like, oh my God. And you don't even talk logic about, oh, that's so silly. Why is he going backwards? Why is he walking backwards? My son, when he first played his soccer game, I think he was, uh, he was not even five. He was, I think, four or something. He played his first soccer game. And um, his first goal, <laughs> he, he kicked the ball onto the opponent's side. And he roamed around the field like, yay, you know how that Pele or somebody does it, right? He was like, yay, and he was running all the way, so happy. And everybody, all the parents were like, okay, he's so happy, you know? He doesn't know that he should not kick there and he should kick on the other side. And why did he do the goal? Because there was no goalie protecting it. He's not supposed to go there. So that is joy, right? That is joy. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, when you see that joy, you don't put logic. Oh my God, he's so stupid. Why did he? Nobody said that. Everybody was so much clapping and laughing because he was so happy. You know, that is what it is. We have all seen the glimpses of peace. And people actually who had near-death experience, they have seen the glimpse of peace. They have seen the glimpse of reality. Like, you know, Anita Murjani, I think I'm saying her name right. Anita Murjani and there are other people who had near-death experience. When they have it, they actually, Shelly Ray is one other person. Actually, if you, um, there is this person, uh, he has a channel called Bad Gap, Buddha at the Gas Pump. He actually interviews everybody who has gone to the other side, meaning somehow they had, they're enlightened beings. They understood what is, they have seen or understood the reality. And once you have that, right, once you have experienced that and you come back to real life, you won't be the same person anymore. You would have transformed, you know. It is um, how they see, pers the perspective of world completely changes. It's like, you know, if you say that I'm always seeing, like, you know, you have colored, I, this is my favorite example I always give. If you have colored shades, right, you have blue one, I gave you red, I, I distributed all different colored shades to everybody. And there is a white washed wall in front of you. And when you see that, what do you see? I see a red wall. You say, I see a blue wall, pink wall, yellow wall, right? Once I remove the glass, step one is I remove your glass, I show it is white. And when you are having the glass, you will be like, Oh my God, why is she saying she sees, she's saying blue wall? I am right. I see a red wall. That is my truth. She is wrong. He is wrong, right? But then you take that out. And then you see the white wall. You're like, oh my God, this has been white. I have, I was wearing red shades that, that, you know, breaks like blasts your belief system completely. From then onwards, you start thinking whenever you are seeing something, is this the real truth or am I do I have a veil in front of me? Do I have some colored shades? Some Because of my anger, I'm seeing it differently. Because of my envy, am I seeing it differently? You start thinking that way. You will never think that will stay in your head that maybe I'm not seeing the reality. Now, step two, I'm going to turn you and then show you everybody. They all You are judging the other person that they were seeing the blue wall. Do you see why she's seeing blue wall? Because she has blue glasses. The other person has yellow glasses, right? So now you are like, oh my God, it's not that just I was wrong. It is a possibility that everybody is having, why? So everybody else having different glasses is because of their culture, why they are brought up, because of their belief system, everybody has a different shade of lens. If somebody is born in poverty, they are like, they have a different value for money. They don't feel entitled. If you are born in a very privileged household versus a person who is born in... Just yesterday, I saw that somebody um, somebody became IAS. She learned only from YouTube videos. She's very poor. She just learned everything from YouTube videos and she um, became an IAS officer, that UPSC exam or something, right? 
Why? So why can't my son do that? Why am I spending thousands of dollars in his coachings and tuitions and everything? Why is he not doing that? Because he did, doesn't have that pinch. She, she was so badly like, you know, that, what do you call it? That fire within won't come for an entitled kid. It will not come for an entitled kid. So based on your culture, based on your belief system, you are, you have created the glasses you have, the veil you have, comes with a different shade. So you see things different. Everybody, my reality is different from your reality because I am I am brought up in a different place. I am brought up differently by different parents, by different value. Actually, just yesterday, my friend sent me a nice um, screenshot where she was showing we are raised by two parents, four grandparents, four times, 16 great grandparents. So we are lineage, we came from, and how is this impacting us? At least 40 different people we have come from, uh, like, you know, and you keep going on, right? We are the product of all these people's, all these people's impacts, their belief systems, their culture. How did they grow up? If the first person was very poor, he raised his kid in a certain way. If that kid became very successful out of poverty, he has a different belief system that yes, I am in poverty, but I know that I can overcome it with my determination and success. And that's what he will teach their kids. And their kids will be like a little privileged, but they always remember the values their parents said. Now their kids will be more privileged and they it kind of dilutes, but still the moral, the this thing is there, you know. So we are a product of all our forefathers, their belief systems, whether they're good or not, right? Their traumas, we have actually what all this past life thing, why do you go there? Because it doesn't make sense to you. What is happening in my world today, it just does not make sense. Then you take the help of other people who can tell you, who can explain to you that this is not, you have inherited this trauma from your great grandpa or something. There is an ancestral cord or something else. All those things come into picture because we are a product of all those people, right? So whatever we are, my lens, what I'm seeing, my reality is impacted by all those things. So my glasses, the color I give to my glasses is very different from yours because our backgrounds are different, right? Something like that. So people who have done that, gone to peace, they have seen the ultimate reality. They have seen the ultimate reality of it is a whitewashed wall and they will never be impacted. When they come back to the real world and somebody says, I see a blue wall, I see a yellow wall, they completely understand where you're coming from. They do not see life in the same way anymore because they have completely transformed, understood, seen the truth, right? And how did they come to this place? They're continuously surrendering, continuously surrendering all their negative tendencies. That's how they came to peace, right? And surrender is a mechanism. Surrender is a mechanism. Basically, if you keep surrendering your ego, your anger, your pride, everything, then you will see. Otherwise, what happens is when you're clouded with anger, you cannot see. You're blinded with anger. You're blinded with all the lower tendencies. You can't even see what is there. You will argue that you won't understand. You won't understand. You're, why? Because I'm seeing things differently. You're seeing differently. I'm saying I don't see blue. You're saying I see only blue screen blue wall you then what you end up saying you don't understand my problems because you are not there you are not experiencing all these things right actually it's the other way around the blue the person you are trying to help they have to understand that they see the reality so maybe we are seeing something different that to come to that state itself is an understanding so inner peace is a state of a mind it is not an emotion it is not it's it's like you have to change your perspective of your mind it 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 cannot like you know something cannot trigger it basically some action cannot trigger peace it's a state of mind that you have to be in like you know that is what is peace and when you are in a state of peace nothing makes you weak why all the negative tendencies we talked about they make you weak and they are not bothering you anymore so you have this full energy, full potential. You have realized your full potential and you feel very strong. You feel very determined. You feel like unlimited, unlimited source of energy, right? I mean, all the chakras are balanced. You are like psh, full potential. You are glowing with full potential. And there's so much energy that you can do. You can become very, very productive. How are the Swamiji's like, you know, in their 
60s, 70s, they are traveling so much. They are doing so many retreats. How are they doing it? Because of the energy levels they have, right? Because you no longer identify with your body as yourself. You are like, I am this one consciousness. You are me, I am you. That just feeling itself, that to be in that assumption that you are me brings a different perspective, right? And physical disorders, you may have it or you may not have it, but they will not be healed or they can be healed. They will not be healed. It doesn't matter to you anymore because you lost the identity with your body. You don't say, oh my God, this is hurting. That is hurting. You won't say that because it won't hurt you because you don't recognize yourself as this body. I am not this body. I am not this mind. You have went beyond that state. So you can say that, okay, when they are such a guru or something, why didn't they heal themselves? Why are they getting still surgeries? Because they didn't, they don't even bother. That is not bothering them. If something is not bothering you, you won't fix it, right? If something is not bothering you, you won't fix it because you realize there is nothing to fix. So they went beyond it. Even though they have the self problem, uh, The actually the head of Chinmaya Mission right now, he journey to health he wrote a book called journey to health he had so many health issues at a very young age people said that's it you're in a wheelchair you cannot do anything about it he practiced all these things um and he went beyond it and he travels so much right now he has such a busy schedule he goes to every ashram in every country and he teaches kids and people and he does all these things why? And physically, if you see his x-rays and everything, he has these ailments. Doctors will say it's impossible for this guy to do all these things. But still he's doing it. Why now? Now, why is he not fixing and healing himself? Because it doesn't bother him anymore. He's not giving importance to it. He's able to do whatever he wants to do. So it doesn't matter to him. He doesn't want to waste energy in doing that. You know, that's what it is. So um, you become indifferent to them, right? Physical concerns lost any significant meaning that's what it is so the energy field of peace as i said energy field of peace the moment all your chakras are aligned you come to that immense energy field that you have when you connect to the source energy and you connect to and you're humbled and you're grounded by your muladhara your root chakra connecting to the earth energy there is a continuous flow of energy there is continuous intake of energy. There is continuous download of energy, information, everything. That the energy field of peace, the energy field of peace is like invincible. Nobody can penetrate into it. So you cannot be intimidated. You cannot be manipulated. You know how in our lives, like you'll be like, I have been peaceful, but this, my sister or my cousin or my mom, my mother-in-law, they manipulate me all the time. Whenever I talk to them, that's it. All my peace goes away. Why? Because well, you're vulnerable. You are you are capable of manipulating. Why? Because you don't believe in yourself yet. Right? You have self-doubt. All those things. So this, when you are at the energy field of peace, it is so powerful. Peace seems so like, you know, shanti, quiet. But it's also um, shunya. Like, you know, when it's immensely powerful, but at the same time, very quiet. The energy field is immensely powerful. It is impossible to break the energy field and for some negative energy to creep in, something to come in, it's impossible. You are not vulnerable to the threats of the world. That means like, you know, it sounds like, oh my God, it is so powerful. But at the same time, it's, it is powerful and peaceful. It's powerful and quiet, you know? And human suffering is impossible in this field. Why? Because... You are not vulnerable anymore. You are not vulnerable to anything and anyone. Right? So it says that one way to raise your vibration is to fill your heart and mind with loving kindness, with tranquility, with peace. But when can we fill our mind and body with good qualities, like higher vibrations? Why can we, how, when, when you can empty it? So your cup, you have to empty your cup with the lower tendencies. First, you have to empty your cup. Then you can fill it with these things. Doing practices, doing the reason why we do mirror work, shadow work, self-love journey, journaling, why we do all these things is to empty our cup. We are doing these things to empty our cup of the lower tendencies. First, you have to empty your cup. Then you have an empty cup. 
then put nice fertilized soil, sow a seed, nurture it, the plant will grow. It will sprout. Without emptying your cup, you have a concrete, you know, layers of concrete and concrete and concrete of all the negative tendencies. On top of a concrete, if I put soil and put a seed, yes, because of the soil, maybe it will come, but will it be long term? When it starts creating the roots, where will the roots go? There is no earth underneath it. The concrete is there. So first you have to remove the concrete. You have to get in touch with the earth first. You have to remove all the concrete, get in touch with the earth, then put fertilized soil on it, and then put a seed, then, you know, then it happens. So first, you have to work on no lower tendencies. All these workshops are because of that. Then you do other, like, you know, affirmations will work when you have a fertilized soil. You can say that, oh, I'm doing affirmations all the time. They are not working. They will not work. It's like sowing the seed on a concrete. It will not penetrate. It, will, it, is, it is nowhere to penetrate. You're already full of these negative tendencies. On top of it, you're saying it doesn't mean anything to you. There is so much self-doubt. You're saying, I'm in good health. It's like, yeah, right. I have so much back pain. Where am I in good health? But anyway, Madhuri, my master, do it. I'll do it. I'm in good health. I'm in good health. I'm in good health. It won't work. It won't work because you don't believe in it. You have to believe in it. When will you believe in it? When you empty your cup. That's when you will believe in it, right? Silent transmission. So these people, the people who are in peace, what happens is words are not needed anymore. They say prisons of the guru, prisons time. All the gurus have prisons time where they don't speak, they don't give a pravachan, they don't do anything. You just go and sit. In the silent, their energy field is so vast. They are enlightened, they are in state of grace that you don't have to talk. They don't have to touch you. They don't have to put your hand on your head. They don't have to do it. Just you can sit in a big hall of 10,000 people somewhere at the end. You will still feel their grace. You will still feel the peace and tranquility. Why? Because they're in very, very advanced states of illumination that they're glowing and glowing and glowing. And their aura spreads so long that you just coming into the presence of their aura transforms you. In that moment, you will feel like calm and peace. Right? You are, it's like they have healed you kind of thing. But is that permanent? So I can go. Why am I doing all these workshops? I will keep going to the guru's place, right? Wherever that guru is, I'll follow one guru and I'll go there and I will sit there. I feel calm and peace. We go to temples. Why do we go to temples? Why do we feel the peace in the temples? Because of that, you know, that kind of peace, presence of peace. We feel that. Now, I'll just go to gurus. Why am I doing all these workshops? Why am I doing all these things? Because when you go to gurus, it's like taking a Tylenol. My pain has gone down. I took Tylenol, the pain has gone down. So why can't I just keep taking Tylenol for pain? It is a temporary thing. It is not fixing the root cause. The, why is the pain keeping coming back? The, pain, the whole idea is what can you do from the root so that the pain does not come back? Where is the pain stemming from? Why do you have pain? How can I first fix that? Right? Fix the root cause. That means we have to change our behavior. It's not enough if you just go and sit in the guru's presence all the time. Maybe you do that. Eventually, you will change yourself because you are watching everybody. But either way, the transformation should come from within. You have to have some behavioral change, some change in your mindset. Right? So coming back to the silent transmission of the gurus, mystics, sages, saints, and avatars, that's what they are. They do a silent transmission. They don't, they, no words or actions are needed. It's just, you know, the silence, we benefit from their silence itself. Seekers want to be in the physical presence of this energy field and receive the transmissions. You know, it feels really nice uh, to be in that presence. Grace of the Guru, right? Energy of the teacher, Sarah, we talked about all these things. Transmission of no mind. We are not, we are not thinking. We are not feeling that, Okay, now should I focus so that I will feel, get the nothing. You just have to sit there. You have to do nothing. And then you will get the grace of Guru, right? Um, and transmission happens on its own and it's not personal. Guru need not look at you. It's just he sitting there, his presence spreads everywhere. No matter of who you are, who you are, who you are. This person is a very good person. This person might have done a very bad thing and come and sat here. It doesn't matter. No matter what, God's grace is there on everybody the same. God does not um, give more 
focus to a pious person versus a non-pious person. It is not that way. I know our culture and religion always say that uh, God will not see you when you are sinned and all that. If God does not see people who have sinned, what is a Rakshasas? In our mythology, we have Rakshasas, right? Hiranyakashyapa. We have all these Ramana, all these people. They are bad guys, right? They are villains. Why, did, why were they given boons by Shiva? They say Shiva is innocent. No, these people, do you know how much time they have? The mythology says they have did the penance for 14 years. For 14 years, why did it take so long to convince God? Because they have so many negative tendencies. First, they have to shed all their negative tendencies. It took so many years. Then they have to go to a place of, you know, as I say, all the negative tendencies we have, we are putting layers and layers of thin concrete. So they have feet, high towers of concrete. They have to break all that first. They have to break all that first. And then they have to get in touch with the soil, earth. Then they have to plant their idea that I want this God and then nurture it grow. So for them, it takes longer 14 years because they had all the bad things they did. They have to collapse all that to, you know, rise above. Once they have done that, it doesn't matter. God is not partial. I will not give a Rakshasa this, but I will give a Bhakta this. It is not like that. God is like, have you come to this place? That's all. You reach his vibration, he's there for you. That's all it is. It doesn't matter who is. He does not say, oh, in the past you did all these things. I will not give this to you. It is not like that. That's how Rakshasas have gone. They have penance. They have got the thing. Now, what happens is once you get what you want, they will go back to their tendencies. They will go back to their natural self because they are not staying here. They are not staying here. They are again falling back, right? Same thing. So today, let's say I went to a yoga class or a meditation class. During the meditation, I felt something. I saw some light. I saw something. I felt really nice. In that moment, I was like really happy. But again, if I don't meditate every day, I won't have that. Once I got it, right? The glimpse, I got it. But then I'm not there. Similarly, Guru's presence, Guru's are God's himself, right? Guru is Narayana himself expressing to us. Like these people have reached. They don't need to exist in the earth. All these gurus, they have already seen, they have went on the path, the other side. They have seen the reality. They have seen the truth. They don't have, to, they don't need earthly existence. They have done. They have transcended. But why are they still here? To preach us, to help mankind, to help us grow. That's why they are here. So what are they? They are nothing but one consciousness. They have already realized and living the one consciousness. They are God, right? They are God. God is expressing as a human for the benefit of us. Right. So when they are there, when a God, when a guru is there in a room, his presence will be felt by everybody, irrespective of who you are, which background you have come from. It doesn't matter. It's not personal at all. There is no personal connection between guru and it's like all are the same for me kind of thing. Right. The silent transmission happens. So all the saints, right, if you see all the saints energy field, all the saints across the world, right. Because of their energy, we are still alive. Their energy is counterbalancing all the negative energies that are done by activists or all these people, you know. They're strong. Their energy is so strong that it is counterbalancing all the negative energy. And that's why the earth as a whole is existing. Pralayam is not happening. You know, in Indian uh, mythology, they say that there is uh, not mythology. The Vedantas and all, they say that um, the end of the world, the end of the yuga comes when there is pralayam, right? And everything goes away and will go back to the Satya Yuga, the four yugas, right? So why why is it that the Kali Yuga has not come to an end? Because the positive is more than the negative. No matter, we keep seeing all the bad things in the world and we are like, you know what? It's, this is like really bad, bad things are happening. That's it, this is end of the world. Things cannot get more worse than this. No, that is not true. Even in the Katopanishad I was reading, it said the same thing that positive has to be more than the negative for it to exist. It can never be that positive has gone down and negative has gone up. When this has happened, even like this, that's it. God will come in one avatar or whatever happens, an entire destruction happens. That it is not like, you know, it is not ready for human consumption. So it has to go away. We have to start from scratch again. Go back to Satya Yoga. Right. That's what it is. So it's always like that. Also, we as a soul, our soul wakes up in the morning. You know, at night they say that it is kind of we are dying every night and waking up in the morning. One philosophy says that we wake up in the morning only when there is something good 
in that day forget about your life in that day there is some more good than bad that's the only day when the soul wakes up if the soul sees that there is more bad than good it won't wake up there is no point of waking it up that's what it is at a soul level right the pralayam has come the end of the yuga end of the body has come it's not needed to so the fact that you are awake the fact that you are awake today you woke up today in the morning means there is something the good is more than bad for you in this day wake up with that thought when you wake up there is more good no matter how bad the situations are in your life if you wake up with that thought and if you are looking for how is it i am i am jobless right now i have a financial problem i have a health problem my mom has been diagnosed with this she is in critical condition what how is good more than bad in this once you analyze that okay then you will see at least my mom is in a hospital i have enough money to put my mom in a hospital i have i have i'm jobless but my savings are there i'm glad i saved money uh i don't have enough financial thing to put my mom continue in that hospital but i'm so glad that my cousin is the doctor and he has given me a discount when you start looking at what is positive in this you will always find something positive in it always find something if you don't find any positive things in any of your circumstances you are breathing air you are having sun you are having water you are having a house to sleep in you have a bed to sleep in you have water you have fresh drinking water you have food that's enough that's enough to be grateful for that is enough good in your life than all the bad things that are happening in your life if we see with that perspective if we see with that perspective then we will change our mindset towards things right so these people's energy energy field counterbalances the human energy field right and it actually helps us and because we are like you know how are we still here i mean with all this bad things how are we still here because of them so let me see what can we do what did they do to reach that state how can i evolve right so you will invest in your spirituality you will start evolving you will start going to higher vibrations right they are the saving presence in our world Sur- surrender to ultimate reality right in this state in this state the hallmark of this level is desirelessness they have no desire for anything in the world they don't desire even that oh now i have to uplift these people that is also not a desire they don't have any desire they are just being you know they are just being who they are their being who they are is enough it makes all the difference right and everything man- and then they just have to get a thought their thought is how can i make a retreat that i can share my experience with it that's it they need to get a thought and it will manifest it's like somehow things everything the universe conspires in making their thoughts manifest in no time like this like some bhakt will come and say um sir i i own this um you know uh, big community hall you can use that and somebody else will say uh, you know i have all these chairs i can send it to you uh, with no you know it is not about oh i don't have any money i do i cannot plan this nothing the you have to get a thought and it's like you know magic right aladdin it's like i have to get a thought that oh my god i have to do a diwali party i want to invite 40 people i have to manage for the food i have to manage for all the um, utilities and everything like you know the um, um uh, spoons and forks and stuff and decorate the house and buy some return gifts and buy some sweets and buy some food you will you have to get a thought that i have to do this surprisingly everybody will come and say hey you know what madhu don't worry about it we'll do a potluck you are anyway hosting it you don't cook anything we'll do a potluck we'll all get one item somebody and so that is taken care of somebody will say hey do you need any help i'm free from afternoon i can help you decorate the house and somehow my kids will come who will magically help me out in the house doing all the chores or clean up so things will happen at this stage you just have to get a thought and it will manifest you know and why because you are in continuous synchronicity what is synchronicity it's uncanny coincidences or the unlikely occurrence of parallel events you will not imagine you will not imagine how like you know how did that person come and help me i didn't even know that person well it seems he attended one retreat and he got really benefited so it changed his life so he just said okay i have a community hall just use it 
uh, somebody said, you know what, I can arrange all the speakers and surround system for you, or I can record your session and upload it to YouTube video. I'm like, what is happening? Synchronicity is that. Synchronicity is coincidence. Things happen without you planning for it. You just have a thought. You don't worry about how things will happen. You have a thought that I have to organize this. That's all. Everything will come in place. And it's effortless. You are not tired at the end of the day. Everything is ready. You just have to sit there. You know? So some of the synchronicities, they say, is seeing repeating numbers like 11, 11, like all those things. Thinking about something before it happens in real life. You know? You say that, oh my God, I just thought I have this thought that you will say this. Or I had a thought that the milk will spill and it spilled. I mean, like, it's amazing, right? We all have this in our lives. We all have these glimpses. Why are we not being in that continuous presence is because whoever is not there, you have to practice, right? Um, and you are like, you don't have the song in your playlist and you are thinking, oh my God, I didn't download that song. It would be so nice if I had the RT song here. Now it would be perfect for the occasion. And automatically somebody's, Something will be playing and say, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. They'll be playing that music. I'm like, oh my God, how did you get that song? I was just thinking about it. Can you play it for me, please? You know, that's what happens. That's what happens. Synchronicity is like amazing. So permanent state of peace, right? Once we practice, once we practice being in that state of peace, whoever touches that state of peace, they are like what they want it. So they are continuously like, you know, what do you do? So this is Dr. David Hawkins. He's like, seriously, he is like the Param Guru. Um, how he has explained to the world on the map of consciousness, how to. So I am uh, going to uh, Swami Chinmayananda's um, Vedanta studies. And we are doing Viveka Chudamani right now. In Viveka Chudamani, the first sloka. The, I mean, the first initiation sloka is um, uh, Shankaracharya giving his um, prayers to his guru. The second sloka is the eight steps to spirituality. In the eight steps to spirituality, the second step, first step is you, are, you have to take a human life. You can read spirituality only in human life, not in animal life. So first step is we are already grateful. Like, you know, you didn't have to do anything. You took a human birth. Second, life, second step is being grateful that you got a human birth. Gratitude. Third step is Pumsatvam. Pumsatvam means courage. Manliness. What is that manliness? Why do you need that manliness? To fight the lower tendencies. To not, to let go of the lower tendencies. The courage. That Pumsatvam. When I'm, when I'm reading that, right? When I'm listening to that Pravachan, it is mapping to letting go. It is mapping everything that is said in there. The steps of spirituality is mapping to this. It's like amazing. It's amazing. That is like, you know, synchronicity. So the courage to not let the lower tendencies haunt you, touch you, grab you and pull you down. That is Pumsatva. The That is the manliness, the courage I need to fight the lower tendencies. That is the prerequisite of spirituality. Like, you know, how to go in the steps. So first you let go of all the lower tendencies. You have this, then you start elevating. You cannot elevate when you have all these lower tendencies grabbing you. You start elevating. You're drowning because you have all these weights, right? So you go higher and higher. So what um, Dr. David Hawkins experienced that glimpses of peace, when he experienced the glimpses of peace, and he started realizing that, these things are happening more spontaneously and unexpectedly. He's He has started feeling this peace like so frequently. And he's like, you know what? Why is it coming and going? Why is it coming? I want it to be permanent. So he went and he went on 11 days. Remember we talked about how he went into a forest and he sat there to let go of his lower tendencies to do all that. And then he came out. So now again, he did 11 day, like, you know, sadhana. Um, of continual surrender. Let me sit. Let me see what my mind, what comes into my mind. Let me surrender it. Let me surrender it. Let me let go of it. Surrender it. Let go. Surrender. Let go. He did this practice for 11 days. And then he had this immense, immense, if you talk to Dr. Eckhart Tolle, um, you know, all these people, right? Uh, they have this, they will tell you how their transformation story happened, how they saw the bliss how they saw the reality and after that, how everything in the world happened. He experienced that 
at that time during those 11 days he is like this immense peace this where i touched the consciousness i saw that we are all one like you know there is no body nothing the enlightenment he got enlightened right and he realized that all things are connected all things are connected and everything is a hologram like you know it is my projection the real world is my projection he realized that talking about is one thing and understanding and realizing it and feeling it is a different thing his i him my ego i disappeared completely and it became meaningless like i don't exist you know and true being is stood outside of time there is no space and time they the transcendent space and time you know it doesn't so you don't feel like oh my god today we have to do this we have to finish this today or you don't that is limiting thinking that i have to do oh i'm already 40 i did not do this this milestone i have to i thought i want to run a marathon i want to own a house by this time that time and you know that kind of hurry is not there anymore because you don't see time that way right there are no emotions or feelings because for everything you don't feel angry or you don't feel sad or depressed there are no emotions or feelings right um and communication occurred with anybody on a level of silence you don't have to talk you know how gurus they come into your presence and they say they predict everything about you because they know you you know they don't need you don't need words you don't need to tell them what you are what they just know right that is what it is once you go to that state you have gone to a place where you um became like god it's it is god right it is godliness you you know everything you understand everybody without they opening their mouth right it's it's amazing whenever whenever i read experiences like this of people i get goosebumps and i'm like oh my god it's like god is not in some place these are gods right these are gods people who have touched that and stayed there had experienced they are gods and they have come and helped they what are they doing right now he passed away in i think 2012 or 2020 i don't remember i have to say um why did they still exist even after experiencing that immense bliss because they want to help mankind they wanted to give he gave all these books letting go power versus force all these books he gave he taught because he wanted to uplift the mankind right it is it is so beautiful their journey is so so beautiful so what happens after enlightenment right so spiritual awakening that is what is spiritual awakening right what are the signs of spiritual awakening you are he will come back to real life nobody will know the difference like he's still the same but what happens is he will not engage <clears throat> he will not get angry he'll not get mad he will be okay with everything right you will not get mad at them because they have changed their aura you are in the presence of their aura so the person is the same they are doing the same job they are waking up their habits are the same those won't change but still there is a change in them you know uh, their behavior changes right and their emotional their emotional well being sense of emotional well being is different then and they tend to slow down and reflect on everything what is going on right uh, their shifts in priorities and values and all these uh, i have to work i have to earn so much money their milestones all those things will change because it's not important anymore right and beginning to hold the opposites together we talked about dwandvas we talked about dark side and light side you have to combine them to make it a whole so they will start to holding it together right because they are accepting the dark side they don't see the dark side in others they accept the dark side of others too right all these things these are all signs of spiritual awakening and the i completely drops the i the moment just do a small experiment in the house the moment you take out the i in any situation i want this with our kids like i want you to do this because i spent so much of my money and energy on this i want you to do this i i feel it this way i get angry with you when you do this to me i don't like this i like this i love this when we remove the i i think it's like that's it you remove the i in at least one thing every day if you i i think i'll do one workshop like that i'll do one workshop and i'll come up with exercises where remove the i in one thing every day like you know i think that is it that is counseling where you come and say hey i my mom is like this i my mom my house my mortgage my the rent my 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 health once you when whatever you come up with if i am able to explain to you to remove the my part of it i part of it 
I think that's it. You're healed with, at least with that thing. I think if I do that, by the way, I'm taking the, I'm getting certified as a life coach. I just signed up. I'm pretty excited about it. I have uh, taken a six month life coach, uh, international coach federation certification. Um, so it's a six month program. It starts from number sixth. So I'm pretty excited about it. And after that, I'm going to do other things to enhance my coaching capabilities kind of thing. But that is the point, right? Whenever you talk to anybody, if you want to help them or if you want to help yourself, do one exercise. What is it? Hear yourself saying things. Hear yourself. I, I remove that I. What will happen then? If you remove the I of I spent so much money on you, what happens if you remove that I? Forget about that I spent so much money on you. Then the thing, does it still have the so much weight, right? So try doing that in things. It changes your perspective. I'm telling you, it is amazing. It's I tried that. I'm like quietly thinking in my head, why am I getting so upset with this? And then I'm like, what am I upset about, right? Ask questions. What am I upset about? Okay. Is there an eye in this? Where is the eye in this? If I remove that eye, what will happen? If I remove that eye, then it is not bothering me because there is no eye in it. So once you start, it's it's a spiritual practice. You have to do that. You have to do it multiple times. It gets very annoying because you will go in circles. At first, like you're going in circles, you're going nowhere. It doesn't make sense. What do you mean I have to remove? I, I did everything. What do you want? What are you saying that I have to remove myself from this? Yes, because we are just a channel. We are a channel through which the universe is doing things. I am not doing anything. I am not, I am privileged. If you are not there to listen to this talk, who will I give this to? So I'm actually learning through sharing. So this is for me. Everything is happening for me. I am learning while preparing these slides. My understanding of the topic has deepened way more. While explaining to you, I am remembering, I am remembering all the Vedanta texts I have read, all the other books I have read, what my mom said, what my grandpa said. I'm remembering all those examples. I'm using my family's examples, my experiences, my work experiences, my childhood experiences, all these things. So this is for me. This is happening for me. And because it is coming through me by, if, if Dr. David Hawkins did not write this book, let him go. If the book was not ready, if the Microsoft PowerPoint is not there, for me to make it a structured thing to continue and you know do it in a right way. Um, all these things, if internet is not there to provide me with these images, if Canva is not there for me to check. If you put every single thing that went into this talk, then there is no me here. If all these things were not there, I would have not done anything. If I did not have a voice, if I lost my voice today, then I wouldn't have given it. If you all did not come, the energy of you energizes me to give this stuff. I have, trust me, I have recorded um, last week. The recording did not happen. So I re-recorded it. Whoever attended last week, if possible, if you have time, just go and hear the recording again. They are very different. The examples are different. At runtime, spontaneously, what I get when there is, I'm not seeing you. Actually, I'm seeing only the um, slideshow right now. I'm not looking at any of you. Even then, I know before I opened the call, before I started sharing my screen, I have seen all of you. So I know there is energy of 20, 25 people here. And I, I feel the energy. I don't have to see your faces. I feel the energy. That energy energizes me to, you know, how can I, how can I share this in a much better way kind of thing? So it makes me present it in a completely different way. So because of all this, I am a channel. I am not, I haven't, there is very less of me in entire this setup, very less of me. So when you think like that, right? When you think like that, you will feel how small you are in front of the grand scheme of life. Everything is happening. Even without all those things, this will not happen. That means what is my contribution to this? 1% maybe, right? So when you see, then ego will completely drop. Your ego will completely drop that I am doing this. I have done this. I, I, me, me. When the ego drops, then I will not get angry. I am not envious about things. I'm not jealous of things. All those lower tendencies will drop the moment my ego drops, right? So 
after enlightenment, the I completely drops. My body, my mind completely drops. It's all pervading, all one, one consciousness, Aham Brahmasmi, right? So because of that, what happens is, after all these things, after his 11 days of these things, he came back to real life. He understood. He It, it took some bearing for him to understand. Okay, I understand now. He's come back to real life. Right now, what happens is when you come back to real life again, all the things will be there, people triggers, everything will be there. But he realized that I can either allow them to entertain them or completely let go. So he is in a place where nothing is touching him, you know, he has become this entity where nothing is touching him, he has become invincible, right? And his personal identity of who I am is completely different, right? Because he has understood the truth of the self. He understood that self is all consciousness. There is no me because you are me and I am you. Actually, I got this another book uh, from Chinmaya Mission yesterday, Kaivalya Upanishad. It is about Shiva saying, the title says, I am you, I am in you and you are in me. That is the title that grabbed me. It is, uh, it's a smaller Upanishad, so I want to read it. Um, but anybody who read Kaivalya Upanishad can understand that, you know, it explains that concept of how am I you? And how are you me? It is very, very difficult to understand that concept. So I want to read that book. I'm pretty excited about that book as well. So quantum mechanics. Now he says that <clears throat> he has advised all these books. I have the Tao of Physics in my book list. Now it's a sign that I have to read it. So basically what happens is all these books, they explain the science of one consciousness. They explain how our brain is a hologram. They explain how I am projecting whatever is there in front of me. I am projecting you. I am projecting, if you are my, mean to me, I am projecting that. Why will I project you being mean to me? Uh, why will I project, um, think of the worst case scenario where, um, um, where you are a prisoner of war and you are being like beaten to death. Why am I projecting that to happen to me, that horrifying thing to happen to me? Think of, um, domestic abuse or these prostitutes or very, very bad things happening to them. Why will they project that? There is a reason for all that. Quantum mechanics, science has done exploring everything where they are seeing that when you go to that extent of subatomic particles, how they are reacting, right? The high energies of the subatomic particles, how are they reacting? Quantum, quantum physics is doing a lot of research in understanding how these frequencies happen, how our brain perceives, right? They are doing a lot of mathematical analysis and frequency patterns and understanding that even science has come to a place where they are saying that everything in the universe is connected. Everything in the universe is connected. You are connected to me, I am connected to you. We are all connected, we are using each of us. We are using each of us to help each other out. In fact, we are using all of us to help each other out. Once you come to that understanding that everything is happening for me, not to me, it's not that God is mean and he's doing bad things to you or forget about karma in a bad way. I did bad karma, so I'm getting punished. Completely erase that concept. I am getting this opportunity to understand, like if you are doing PhD in math, right? You, have to, you cannot compare to a second grade kid and say, Oh, he's just doing one plus one, two plus two. Look at the math I'm doing. I'm doing like linear algebra. I'm doing this math analysis, uh, real analysis. I'm doing all these things. It's not fair. I have to sit and do four hours of homework when he's doing only two, hour, two minutes of homework, right? Because you asked for it. You asked for it. Why do you have so much? Because you asked for it. You, you picked up PhD program. You wanted to graduate, right? Once we think that way, all that is happening to enhance you to help you become a expert in the field of that whatever subject you picked up right so phd is happening to you the curriculum is to for you the curriculum is to help you become an expert subject matter expert in that so it is happening for you so once you understand that once you understand that every single event around me every circumstance i am put in everything losing a job losing a wife losing a husband losing a mom parent losing a child um, like, you know, whatever, all these things are happening for me to help me somehow 
grow and get what I have signed up for, what I have signed up for. Nobody put this on me. Nobody forced you to do a PhD. You wanted to do it, right? So these quantum mechanics, these books, it seems they explain how the science of it, right? So if you're interested, you can pick up one of these books and read. And in the hologram, each part contains the whole, like in an ocean drop, drop of the ocean, it has the characteristics of in the entire ocean, but is that drop, can that one drop make the entire ocean? No, several drops like that make the entire ocean, but all the oceans have the, all the drops have the same characteristics. We are all drops of the ocean. We all have the same characteristics. If you see the drops of the ocean, can you tell if one drop is superior than the other drop? No, everything is the same, right? And if you see a wave, can you tell the drops? Can you identify the drops in that? Or do you even think of the drops when you go to a beach and a wave comes and um, wets your feet and that's bliss, right? The experience of the waves coming and touching your feet, right? And the how you feel your legs sinking into the sand when the wave is receding. At that time, do you think of that one drop? No, you don't. Do you even think of 100 drops, 1,000 drops, million drops? No, you think of that one consciousness, the entirety of it. The entirety of the ocean is doing that to you, right? So that's what it is. So this um, um, each, so basically the quantum mechanics says that each individual mind can reflect the entire universe. And these people who have reached that state of peace have experienced that. They have seen that. They have experienced the entire universe. That's why they have become like, you know, enlightened folks. Brain is a hologram. It's interpreting a holographic universe, right? And they are saying, the science is saying that our brains mathematically construct concrete reality, mathematically construct. So there is science behind it. We are not stupid. We are not, people say, oh, you're imagining things. You are so stupid. You are, you are just imagining your illusion, this, that, and all that. Science says we mathematically construct concrete reality by interpreting frequencies from another dimension. Things change here. We are talking about dimensions right now. And a realm of meaningful pattern primary reality, transcending time and space. It seems that we have the capability of touching other dimensions, transcending time and space. That's how amazing is that? How amazing is that? Right? And people, like scientists are doing this. Scientists are researching this and saying that this is the possibility. This is what the reality is. Right? This is what science is saying. What are mystics and sages and gurus? What are they saying? Or what is our Vedanta saying? That same thing, right? It's the same thing. And science and mysticism, right? They are like two sides of the mountain. You have to go to the peak of the mountain. Science is climbing this way. Mysticism is climbing this way. But at the end of the time, what are they reaching at? The peak is the same. Whether you come take the mystic path or the scientific path, it's the same. The peak is the same, right? Science and mysticism are converging lines. When the necessary intelligence arises in humanity, the two will merge, right? Now, scientists left brain, mysticism right brain, it doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. The concept is the same, right? Reality as witnessed by both is the same at the end of the day. Whichever side of the mountain you pick up, you will reach the peak. So it's up to you. Read science, read quantum mechanics, understand all that and go there if you are capable of. Otherwise, Vedanta texts, what our culture is saying, Liz letting go book and all those things, do that. Go, it's the same. Now, they, Dr. Um, Hawkins says there is a third way to climb the mountain, and that is mechanism of surrender. How do we, let's say I'm not a mystic. I don't have mystical powers. I am not, I'm not too smart enough to read that science of quantum mechanics and understand it. So what? how do I go to the peak of the mountain? I constantly surrender. Constantly surrender. Surrender all our low things. Then you increase your vibration, increase your vibration. Let it go, let it go, let it go. That's it. Practice that song from Frozen, let it go, right? By letting go everything. Actually, you know, before I started this book, before this book came to me, uh, one of my managers, I told him about, I'm a very passionate person. Even as an employee, I'm very passionate. I used to tell him that 
um, I, I worry about the product as a whole. I worry about sales. I worry about implementation. I worry about operations, QC, infrastructure. I My hands were there and everywhere when I was, uh, I'm on a break from work right now, but I was um, everywhere. So um, my manager, I think this was like five years ago, I think five years ago or something, he gave me, uh, it is there in front of my office wall right now. He gave me a photo frame, which uh, a boy releasing the balloons, right? And it says, let it go. He gave that and he said, you have to keep it in where, in front of your desk where you can see it every day. And whenever you are getting frustrated on why sales is not doing their job or why these people are not doing their job, I want you to look at that and say, let it go. And he said, as your KPOs, you have to memorize that letting go song from Frozen. He actually started the first aspect of my guru of let it go, let it go kind of thing. Something is bothering you. Either if you can do something about it, do it. Otherwise, let it go. Don't let it stick to you and bother you kind of thing, right? So, yeah, like the third angle to the mountain is renouncing all these lower tendencies, right? And then go higher and higher. That's how you go up. So that's where we end this topic on peace. Um, next chapter, it's interesting. It is reducing stress and physical illness. And all these are topics that we are going to talk about. Psychological aspects, stress proneness, medical aspects of stress. We are like very interesting topics. Um, the relationship of consciousness to stress and disease. So we are going to discuss about this. So until 13 chapters, we talked about all the um different emotions in the map of consciousness now the map of consciousness is completely covered there is a book called the map of consciousness where he explained on how to let go of each one in much more detail there is another book by dr david hawkins um if you're interested you can go and read it but um we are going to touch that book in the letting go guided journal workshop we are doing we are going to refer to that book a lot while doing the practice exercises and from this chapter, we are halfway or two thirds in the book. Now, from here on, the topics are how to implement what we learned in the regular uh, life of ours. You know, that's what we are going to do. And 